Well, hello out there in floss tube land. It's me. Yes, it's been six months since my last floss tube, but you know what? I have six months worth of stitching to show you, and I'm so happy to be back here. So excited to show my stitching. I have been stitching along, um, you know, some weeks more than others, and, um, you know, just life gets in the way and all that fun stuff, but it's been a great six months, a lot of good things happening. Um, a good productive six months in, you know, just in quilting, designing, stitching, crocheting, all of that fun stuff that I love to do. And I love to share my stitching with you. So I'm back. Today is June 20th, 2023. And this is Floss Tube episode number 17. And where I'll be showing you once again, my six months worth of stitching. So I do have a lot of things to show you today. So this is probably gonna be a long video. So I hope that you grab your favorite stitch that you're working on, your favorite cup of tea, whatever you drink and settle in for a good long floss tube. So um, what I'll be showing you is just a few of the things that I picked up from the framers. Also I'm gonna be showing you um, things for my Christmas stitching because my last floss tube was in November. And so I talked about a lot of Christmas stitching that I was going to be doing. So I'll have a lot of those finishes to show you. And then I have some other finishes to show you. I want to show you a lot of whips, some new starts, and of course my heritage wall progress. So the first thing I wanted to show you is I got these two things back from the framers. Okay, I'm gonna push this one out of the way. I've shown you that one before, but I thought I'd bring it in and talk about that for a minute. All right, so I showed you these finished, but I did not show them framed, but I just love them. These are for my bee wall. Okay, this one is the Honey Bee Sampling by Little House Needleworks. And, you know, I gave you all the details on earlier floss tubes, but just quickly because of my library card, it lets me know that I stitched it on a 36 count American Froth by Dames of the Needle. And I just stitched with threads from my stash. And I remembered I stitched this while I was camping with Christy last year. And then this one, same thing. I stitched this on the same camping trip. This is the Bitter Flower Sampler by Birds of a Feather. And let's see, I stitched it on 36 count Bee's Knees by Seraphim. And this was also threads from my stash. And so when I'm doing things for my bee wall, you know, I just grab a bunch of golds and pinks and reds and things like that. And usually everything works out and matches up. But slowly but surely, I'm adding things to my bee wall. Of course, I have other things picked up from the framers, but I just thought maybe I'd just show you these two. And in my next floss tube, I'll show you a few more. But this was my first, my very first one that I did for my bee wall when I started it. And let's see, this should tell me the year. Okay, so I started my bee wall in 2019. So four years ago, so I've stitched several things since then. I've shown you everything in my floss tubes that I've added to my bee wall, but I thought this might be kind of fun to show you my very first one again, in case you haven't watched my past floss tubes. This is when flowers blossom and it's by With Thy Needle and Thread. I stitched this on 28 count Lugana in mushroom and I used the called for colors. I stitched with two threads over two and I did expand this side. I believe there was only, yeah, there was only one beehive to this point in the chart and the fence ended there. Okay, so this chart ended right there. But I had picked up this frame on clearance at Hobby Lobby and I loved it. And so I thought it was the perfect height for this. I just thought the frame looked like it was perfect for this stitch, which is why I decided to stitch this on 28 count Lugana because I knew that that would be perfect for this. And then I just needed to add a little bit of something on the side to expand that size a little bit. So I just added that beehive, another bee, a few other little thing, you know, little, little fun, I don't know, what do we want to call them, doohickeys? 
and another bee extended the fence and added some hearts which were pulled from here in the chart. So often when I'm trying to make something larger to fit a frame, I'll just take pieces from the chart itself and expand out. And I just love this design by Brenda. I just think it's beautiful and it's I just cherish it because it's my very first one that I did for my bee wall. And so I'm still constantly stitching things for my bee wall. I'll show you a few of those things here. But if you guys have any you know, suggestions of maybe things that I haven't seen yet or things that you think would be great for my bee wall, you see the things that I like to stitch, um, please leave me a comment and let me know the chart. And I think that would be really fun to look through the comments and look up your ideas and see what I might have. Some of them may, maybe I already have kitted, maybe I've already started, maybe I've never seen them before or just have never, you know, pulled the trigger and, and bought the chart. So um, I would appreciate your suggestions. All right. So those are my framed finishes. And then the next thing I'm going to start off with is my heritage wall because that's what I always start off with when I'm stitching, right? And so I thought I would start off and talk about that because this is something I always have going. And so this one, I had shown you this finish on Instagram, but this is the first floss tube that I've done since then. And so let me pull that off the design board. This one, so I have all four of my great grandmothers finished and I had just started on my two grandmothers. So this is, this is my dad's mom, my grandma. This is my crochet grandma, that's what I call her. Ida Marie Salzetti Ewell. And she was born in 1913. And so this is the chart by Jacob, Modern Folk Embroidery. And what I did with this is I did not put the numbers up here and that's where I put her name. And, you know, I did the alphabet down here. And let's see, what else did I do different? Oh, and then I just put her birth year here because it didn't fit up here on the line. I was maybe going to put my initials, see where there's initials here. I was maybe going to put LH there, but I don't know. I just kind of like how it looked like that. Sometimes I put my initials in, sometimes I don't. So there's that finish right there. And... So I stitched with um, Gloriana Silk and Schoolhouse Red. And I stitched this on the 36 count linen number two from Farm Girl Dry Goods. And I love how it turned out. And my two, my last two great grandma samplers are at the framers right now. So when I go pick those up, hopefully in a couple of weeks, that I will take this one in to be framed. And then I've got one more that I did. My other grandma, I was able to finish that. And so let me put these back in the bag. I'm gonna try to stay a little bit more organized this time before I pull the next one in. All right. So I'll start talking a little bit about that while I'm folding this one and putting it in the bag. So this is for my other grandma. This is my mom's mom, Mildred Lucy Butterfield Crane. And she is my grandma that I grew up next door to. All right. And this lives in this bag that Christy made me for my birthday. And this cute little charm that she bought me to put on there. And thanks, Christy. And um, she came out for a visit in February for my birthday, and it was a really fun visit. And so, all right, so what I did with this one, I started this one immediately as soon as it was, um, was my other one was finished. It was right when Needlework Market was in Mar the first week in March, and this was a new release from Needlework Market. And so this is the Americana Red. By October House and when I saw it I thought that is perfect for my grandma I loved everything about this I did change one thing because you know I often have to change some of my samplers to make them 
my heritage samplers to make them kind of go with my grandma or grandpa, whoever I'm stitching them for, is I love this barn and I'll probably end up stitching on something else, but I know my grandma and I know that she would want a house instead of a barn because she spent her time in the house and grandpa, of course, spent his time in the barn. And so I decided to do everything exactly the same and then I left this part blank right here and then kind of filled it in. So first off, what I did was I added a line here at the top and added her name and her birth year. And then I had a little bit of room in there. So I added a key and then I, let's see, what else did I do down here? So I did everything down here, but right here where these little flying geese are is I could fit under here Harriman, which is the town that she was born in, that I was born in, that we lived in next door to each other. And so I added that. Everything else is the same everywhere else. And then from this point on, I waited and did, did the scissors and this little quilt block until I knew exactly what I was doing here. And so I found this little house to do sort of like, I don't know, it's kind of halfway made up I, is from one of my old charts that I had sort of, but I had to resize it and do it, you know, a little bit. I started from there and kind of did it the size that I needed to and adjusted it and added some things and took away a few things. And then I found this little um, fence and tree from Little House Needleworks, one of their charts. And so I thought that fit perfectly right there because I was trying to elongate, you know, the size of kind of like what the barn was a little bit. And then I went ahead and added that quilt block and the scissors there. I was able to put my initials there. I was able to put the year that I finished here. And yes, I do know that this is 2023, not 2024. In here, they put the year, I think, that this was um, designed. And But I decided to put 24 in here because that's the date of my grandma's birthday. So she was born in 1916. Cass, am I putting that too high? Can you see that hole? Move it down just a little bit. There you go. Okay. I want you to be able to see the whole thing. All right. So she was born in 1916, and she was born in July. So right there, I added that seven. And so, and she was born on the 24th. So that's what those little fun things are. It's fun to personalize things. And then I had a little bit of room. So I added just another variation of a quilt block. I added uh, this little cat. And, um, you know, those are personal things about my grandma. And then the tea and the chair. And of course, all of this is personal about my grandma because she's my quilting grandma. She's the one who taught me to quilt. And so that's exactly when I saw this sampler, why I knew immediately that this was the one that I needed to do um, for my grandma Millie. And so I stitched this on 36 count salted caramel by number 12 Stitch Company. And I just love this linen, it's so beautiful. And then the thread that I used is, um, oh, I didn't write that on the card. I'm gonna have to remedy that, but here it is. Right here, it's pomegranate, okay, and it's right here, and it's the Gloriana silk. I'm going to leave that out so I can write that down, but again, that is October House Americana Red sampler. And so it's really fun to switch out these samplers, like use them, use the chart as closely as you can, but it's been fun to, you know, it's just my own, for my own personal use, and um, put on my wall and switch things out to personalize for each one of my ancestors uh, that I'm stitching for. And I just really, I'm having fun with that. And so now I've got another one right here that I started because both of my grandmothers are finished. And so now the next one is for my mom. And so this is the start for my mom. And um, this is by Marjorie Massey, and it's a traditional folk sampler. 
And um, so of course this one is not a red sampler, but that doesn't mean you can't make it a red sampler. You just look at everything when you look at the chart and find out if there's a lot of shading or anything like that, or if it's something simple enough that you can everything can be one color. And maybe once in a great while when there's something that's too colored like this, I might have to change just a few things um, to make it the design show up because it's only in one color, but so far I have not had to. And so this one, I kept going back and forth on the one that I was choosing for my mom, not sure what I wanted to do, but I just thought that this was perfect for her. And I decided to leave off the border. I don't have a border on a lot of these samplers, so I decided to leave off the border, which may give me a little bit more freedom to do what I want to do when it comes to adding her name on the bottom. I may just, instead of doing this other alphabet down here, I may use the same alphabet, but just spell out her name. And so my mom's name is Carol and her maiden name is Crane. And so I thought this was really fun. Look at these two initials that Marjorie put in there, Marjorie Massey, but I think I might add CC in there for Carol Crane. <laughs> and the one thing that this sampler was missing that I really wanted for my mom is roses. She loves red roses. And so I thought, so I looked and looked at this and I thought she loves everything in here, literally, but there is some acorns and leaves and squirrels down here. So I thought maybe I might take this one off. And because there's plenty of birds throughout, I thought maybe I'm going to leave this section plain right here and add like a little spray of red roses and do everything else the same. And so that's my plans for that. And um, that's going to be fun. And I'm enjoying stitching on this. And so this is stitched on a 36 count everything else by Mystic Fabrics. And I'm using one thread of silk linen, number 946. And see, and I just put it here and then I tape it right there at the Swatage at nine, number 946. And I love that deep red. She likes a deeper red. And so I for sure put that on there, but this is really fun. And I'm gonna continue stitching that with usually one or two red threads when I start, which is how I do my, sam my you know, sampler stitching. All right, let me pull this out while I'm putting that other one back in the bag. Now, last in my last um, floss tube, I believe it was just my last one, that I was talking about this sampler that I was starting for my great grandpa's. I wanted to do, I have a smaller wall that I can fit some blue samplers on. And I wanted to honor my great grandfathers, my grandfathers, my dad, my husband, and my sons, and my grandson, and put them on that wall. And so I had searched for a square sampler because I wanted to put all four of my great grandfathers on in one sampler. And so this is one that I had had for a while and wanted to stitch. This is called a little, whoop, a little Quaker-esque sampler by Blue Ribbon Designs. And so I finished this one. And so what I did different on this one is I just left these corner borders off, stitched the whole thing in the center, and then decided what I wanted to do, you know, afterwards. And so what I did was I kind of looked at this corner border and kind of did the, did the stitchy math and figured it out and just continued all the way around it. I just felt like it needed a strong border to kind of, um, rein those in, kind of frame them and border them, almost like a quilt. And then I went ahead and I did the longest name down here, Thomas Solomon Butterfield, 1882. And um, then I just went around to 1880, Serafino Salzetti, 1870, William Walter Ewell, 1866, James George Crane. And so I, with the longest name, I barely fit that on there 
and then I put the next to the longest name up there so that I could fit the date there and then these two side ones which were shorter you can see that I took the same little motif and I just added on the sides to kind of fill that out and I on this one I put the his um, grandpa Salzetti's birth year before his name so that as you looked around there was a date a name a date a name a date a name you know a date a name so that was my way of thinking for that but this was really fun I loved this one and all the little motifs in it and the alphabet and the numbers in there and so I'll be taking this to the framers next and getting it framed at the same time as my grandmother's and this is on 36 count Boston Tea Party by LFA linens legacy fiber art linens and I use the MPI silk number 746 in French blue okay and love that one yeah I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in the bag <laughs> pull this one in to show you next all right here, sis, maybe I'll have you put that in the bag. That might be a little bit faster so I can start talking about this. Usually when I'm finished with the floss tube, I have so much stuff laying everywhere in piles because I'm usually just handing them to Cassidy and she's putting them over here and putting them over there and I'm putting them on the floor and in a basket and then I have to put everything back together. So I'm going to try to keep everything a little bit more organized. So this one I have started for my Grandpa Crane who is my grandma Millie's husband, my dad's, my, my mom's dad, who, yes, I um, lived next door to until he passed suddenly from a heart attack at a young age. And so I was a young girl. I was like around six. I do remember him, remember sitting on his lap and things like that and a lot of things about him um, as much as a young girl can. But, of course, I've heard all of the stories and, you know, his memories um, from my mom and my aunts and uncles who all live next door to me as well. And, of course, my grandma. And so I am stitching this for him. And his name um, is Nathaniel Crane. He was born in 1911 in Bennington, Idaho. And I'm wondering if I can fit that along the bottom so um, what I'm going to do with this, so this is Sampler Qu Quaker Village and by Happy Mood Point, okay, and what I did with this is all my samplers have to have an alphabet for my heritage wall. This one did not have an alphabet, so I added a line right here and put the alphabet across the top, and then what I'm going to do is put his name across the bottom here. I'll just do the same thing when I'm finished with this whole center thing. I'm gonna put the name across the bottom. And because he does not have a middle name and his name is kind of short, I think I might be able to put Bennington in there. He was born in Bennington, Idaho, so I might be able to put Bennington across here. I'll see, along the bottom. And I think I'm just gonna do everything the same in here. Um, right here, I thought it was kind of fun because this couple right here, would, would represent my grandma and grandpa, right? And my grandma Crane, um, my grandma Millie did walk with a cane in her later years, so I thought that was kind of fun. So I loved this sampler. I searched for a while to find just the right one for him, and I love all these motifs in here, and we'll talk about those as we go along, and uh, as I go along stitching, and of course I'll show you my progress in my next floss tube. So what I'm stitching, with is I'm using the classic color, color works Belsois silks in Chester's blue. I love this blue. I just love how it looks like a denim and I love the variation in it. And I'm stitching on 36 count Cafe Ole by Fiber on a Whim. And I love the variegation in it and a little bit of green and even maybe a little bit of browns and pinks and stuff. I just really kind of wanted this to look you know, older and vintage and kind of go along with this style of stitch. And so that's what's going on with that one. And let's see. 
Where's my blue bag? Okay. Sis, you want to put those back in that blue bag for me? Yeah. And then, I this is a bag that I bought online quite a while ago. I bought it on Etsy. And this is where I keep a lot of my blues, my blue threads. That's what I've been keeping in there, so I keep that in my bag. Just for future reference for different blue threads that I may want to use. And my next one, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to, um, which chart I'm going to be doing next for my grandpa, you all my dad's dad. But I really like this, this color right here. Of silks so I, I bought a bunch of it and this is Gloriana and this is Northern Lights but it has some variegation in it as well and it's a little bit brighter blue it's not a royal blue I don't really care for royal I just I like a navy or a denim so I just keeping this in that bag as well just so that that's together for when I do the next chart all right so that's about my heritage samplers and now I'm going to um, the next thing I'm going to do is kind of start where I left off in my last floss tube talking about my Christmas stitches and so yes I know it's June almost July but we're going to talk about Christmas because I wanted to kind of catch up to date on my Christmas so this right here was my Thanksgiving start that I told you about and this is Christmas Joy by Lori Rippey. And so I was able to finish this. Can you show the pattern one more time? Oh, yeah. It was a little bit out of frame. Sorry. There you go. Cass always keeps me going right. All right. So, and I had talked to you about this before, but I'll tell you one more time. So I um, stitched this on 36 count antique lace by number 12 Stitch Company. And I love this, love this linen. And I just stitched with threads for my stash. So these are all DMC. So I just grabbed a couple of reds and you know some browns and some golds and just stitched it. It was a quick stitch. It was really fun. Started it on Thanksgiving and I kept stitching um, over the weekend till it was finished. And so that was good. And so here's my little stack of Christmas. And let's see, I didn't even bring the bag out for that. So I guess I won't put that back in the bag. All right. So my next, my next Christmas was, this was really fun. Okay, so remember, I love, love, love that you guys um, voted. Thank you so much for, I showed you a whole bunch of, I think I showed you 25 ideas of my Christmas starts that I had in my vintage um, bread box and you guys voted and this one won out I said I wanted you to tell me which one you would like me to start and so this is what I did and I started it um, right away after the voting was finished and so this is baby it's cold outside by Beth Twist from Heartstring Samplery I've always wanted to stitch this, and so that's what I did. I put in my bread box a whole bunch of things I wanted to stitch for Christmas, and you guys helped me decide. Because literally, I loved them all, so um, it made it easy. And in fact, at the end of this one, I'm going to have you, um, I'm going to ask you to vote for something else, too, that's not Christmas-related. Um, if you would do that for me, that really helps. And so I stitched this on 36-count Hazelwood by Fiber on a Whim. And I just did a conversion for my stash just because there's very few colors in here. Let's see. What did I do here? So um, I used holly berry instead of pomegranate. And I used... Country Colors Pine Needles instead of Piney Woods. And I used Weeks Dye Works Havana instead of Picnic Basket. And then everything else is the same. So that's what I had in my stash. And so that's what I used. And 
So I think I'm going to be, I'm not sure how I'm going to finish this. Actually, I was going to say I'm going to take it to the framers next, but I don't know. I don't know. It'd be so cute in a little frame though. Cute little vintage frame. So, you know, I just, I may do that. All right. Cass, there's another one. Maybe just put that in that bag for me. All right. Here's my next one. Got it upside down. Now, this is one that I had in the box, <laughs> in my bread box. And after I finished that one, um, the baby is cold outside, I decided to just hurry and stitch this one. It was just in my system. I just needed to get it stitched. So this is Coverlet Christmas by the Scarlet House. And so I stitched this on 36 count Cafe au lait by Fiber on a Whim, and I used the Belle Soise Silks by Classic Color Works, and I, I don't, I can't remember if I used, I think I only did one, no, I did a couple, three substitutions, but I just loved these silks. I love the linen, and I love this chart, and so I got that done. Now, this is one I think I'm going to do into a little pillow for Christmas. And so that's what I did with there. The only, the only difference that I did was I didn't do the dark behind here because I really wanted this little house to show up. And um, I don't know, not that that doesn't show up. I don't know why I didn't. I just, I just decided to do it that way. And that's what my heart was saying at the time that I was stitching. Now I could have changed my mind if it was a month later and done it differently, but um, that's what I did, and I just, I love it, and I love the little coverlet design down here under the log cabin, and so there's that one. Okay, next up is, oh, remember my green samplers that I talked about in my last floss tube? I was able to do one green sampler, and so what I ended up doing was um, I had shown you several different samplers that I wanted to do. And this one, I, I had a little scrap of linen, uh, 40, 40 count vintage fawn by Lakeside. And I just kept thinking that's gonna look perfect on that. And so I used the NPI Needlepoint Silk, okay. And for that in leaf green, number 255. And I just whip that up there, and I just think it's so cute. And I'm definitely gonna put that into a little pillow. And that's definitely not my first green sampler for Christmas. I will continue doing, you know, at least one per year, whether they're big or small. And I think that's really gonna be fun. I might just do a bunch of smalls and put them in a little basket, I don't know, together. All right, so that, that was another Christmas finish. And I finished most of my Christmas things. I, th I think there was only one that I didn't finish. And so I'll show you that in my whip, in my whip pile. But um, this one, I had shown you that I had previously done a sprig of holly. And then I kept them all in the same bag here and I wanted to do some other Pineberry Lane ones. Okay, so I did a sprig of holly, showed you that already, finished but not into a pillow, and showed you several different other Pineberry Lanes. And so what I did was I started this one. I'm gonna take these off so you can see how both of them look together because I think they're so cute. So this is Merry and Bright. Okay, that's what the chart looks like. And I stitched this one on um, 36 Count Winter's Brew by r and &R, And I stitched with the same DMC. And that's what I talked to you about last time. I have had this doing a few Christmas stitches. This is just some DMCs that I gathered together that I liked and put on this ring. And that's what I stitched this with. And so I just thought, well, whatever I'm doing in any of those Pineberry Lanes that I showed you, they were all had the same kind of colors, and so I just used my own conversion. Again, for this one, using the same thing, pinks, 
and reds and greens and whites and you know just the Christmas colors with some neutrals in there to go you know for like the tree the tree trunk and the hair you know and things like that and so that was really fun so I was able to finish that one and so I'm just going to continue on continue on <laughs> it's hard to speak sometimes doing another Pineberry Lane from this bag and um, here you go sis there's that one and then I'll show you in the fall again when I'm stitching more Christmas all right so this because it's in my Santa bag here must mean it's time for my Prairie Santas yeah so so I'll talk about this floss in a minute but I had shown you this that I had done in for my 2021 Prairie Santa. This is the 1999 Prairie Schooler Santa. When I say Prairie, you know, it's Prairie Schooler. Um, 1999 Santa. And I had stitched this on 40 count Old Town Blend by r, &R. And I had stitched, stitched this one because at the same time I was doing my quilty barn stuff and I'll I'll talk about that next that's sitting right here so I had this once again I had this all set up and ready to go for my quilty barn this is my thread pack when I did my quilty barn sampler okay and so I'm like I literally have so many colors in here of just kind of everything from the rainbow from neutrals to reds to greens to blues to whatever I can't imagine that I couldn't find flosses here to you know to make these um prairie schooler santas and so i just continued on um and did my did my uh 22 prairie schooler santa and this is the prairie schooler santa 2006 and of course i chose this one they're all so fun but i chose this one because it's got the sewing machine and on that one instead of putting Christmas there I put singer on there and I just did my did my conversions here and with these threads and I know that I used 347 both for their Santa coats but if you like a darker red you could always use the 3777 but I decided to go with I think all the prairie schoolers I'm going to do the 347 red for their coats because I just like them kind of all to match. I have done so many of these already and like I said before in the past um, when they all first came out years ago when I was stitching it but my oldest son Ben has those now for his with his Christmas decorations and so I'm starting over and I'm going to do these into little pillows so that I can do them into and make them for ornaments or just little tuck pillows. And I can just like put them on my tree with a clothespin or something like that. I don't necessarily have to put a hanger on them. But there's so many Prairie Schooler Santas to do. So I know I'm going to be able to find the next one that I want to do very easily this year. And so this is what I was alluding to and talking about. This was um, my Quilty Barn. Let me set that over here that I kept keep here in my in my rooster bag that Annette made for me and I don't think that I showed you this framed so this this is the quilty barn um pattern my chart I don't even know if I still have my chart in here yes I do so let me show you so you know what I'm talking about so here's my quilty barn mix and match so what it is is it's these barns here and then within here you can just do all of these quilt blocks but I wanted to show you that they all finish in the same stitch count that all of my stitch cards. I have a plethora of stitch cards. And so you can pop in whatever you want in these barns to, you know, you can put goats in all of them. You can put roosters, chickens, whatever, just mix them all up. And I had decided that I wanted to do a Christmassy one. And so what I did was I put little Christmas trees right here in the loft window and then I did my little snowman for my stitch cards in there and so that's the I just did a single one right there and I got it framed and I just I just love this I just love it in that little little frame there I'm gonna probably stick it on an easel at Christmas time and put it 
on my wall. But so that's what I was talking about when I was talking about when I have my egg floss drops here, you know, with all of the DMCs from this chart right here. And again, with all of the colors, it's like, why do I need to go through all of my DMCs and find golds and greens and blues and reds and everything that goes together when I already have them all pulled out together? And so that's that's why I did that. And then, let's see, I'm going to leave that out. So I need to put that in a bag. And then I did another project using the same thread pack okay and I can't remember if I did show you this before or not so I'm just going to show you again it lives in this bag and I know I used the same thread pack for it and so this is the Christmas fruit basket by Threadwork Primitives there's the chart right there and um, so that's another Christmas finish that I had and I'm definitely going to make that into a little pillow and I stitched it on 36 count baked clay and again I just picked a green from here and actually two greens from here and a pink and a red and then just a couple of neutrals and did that and it's fun to just look at the picture so let me slide that over there and see you can substitute any neutral for any other neutral and you just kind of go dark medium and light and so that's what I did with that. I'm going to put these back in the bag. And I'll probably continue using that thread pack for a lot of other Christmas things. All right, so this is my last Christmas thing. And then I'm going to take a break and pull in all of my other finishes to show you that don't have anything to do with Christmas. But, um, so what I've got going on here is I remembered in my last floss tube that I had told you that I was going to start this right here and that Kimberly was coming and that I was going to see if she wanted to start it with me. And this is the Silver Creek Samplers, my Christmas list. And so, of course, when she got here, she wanted to start it. And so I um, sat down and did the conversion um, with my, with DMC and just because I had had a bunch of colors that I had pulled. And so I did that conversion. She stitched it. And then she offered thread packs on her website um, with the changes in color. I didn't change anything in the design. I just changed places with some of the colors. Meaning instead of a blue car, I did a red. And uh, let's see. I did a pink and red sweater. What else is different color wise? I just kind of switched some colors around a little bit. And I didn't put 2019 in the gift because it wasn't 20, no, 2017. I can't, I can't see what year that was, but 2017 in there. And so I just did a little checkerboard uh, there on the, on the gift and, you know, things like that. But I love this design so much by Diane and I just wanted to do it in my Christmas colors. And so I'm sure if you wanna to go to Kimberly's website, that's Fat Quarter Shop and see if she's got um, any of the thread packs if you're interested in my Christmas list, my conversion and in the conversion it tells where I switched the colors and things like that too. So if you're interested in that. And so that was fun. That's a finish. Don't know how I'm gonna finish this, if I'm gonna frame it. I thought it would be fun to sew it into a, like a tall pillow and put it into, you know, kind of like a basket. I have a larger basket that I keep larger pillows in at Christmas time. Now the linen is 36 count milk cola, um, Wabi Sabi fabric from Kitten Stitcher. And so I love how the white shown up on that. And so that's what I did. Now. I don't know if you're wondering why I have something else sitting here that doesn't have anything to do with this. This is Whitaker that I've shown you several times before and wanted to start. And this is by Stacy Nash Primitives. And so immediately right after I finished this one, I had this linen and I just went ahead and stitched Whitaker on this bottom corner here. 
sometimes I'll do that. I'll just kind of take that linen because I knew that this would look really fun in the corner. And I'm going to save this linen because to put on the back, let me see. I think she, see how you can put the linen on the back to finish him up. And so I remembered, I, um, I called Christy and I'm like, I know you said you wanted to stitch Whitaker. So do you want to stitch him with me? And She's like, yeah. So she, she stitched him and she got hers finished into her little a pillow or whatever you want to call it. And um, of course, I'll be doing that for Christmas this year. But I just used um, colors from my stash. You know what fabric that I used. And um, I didn't, it doesn't take very many colors, but this is what I, this is what I used right here. I used Onyx. So you can see for his coal, I used licorice red. For the red, I used chamomile for his pants there. And then for his body, I used oatmeal. And I don't think I have that here, but I used, I don't know what I did and why it's not on my ring. I probably just grabbed orange off of something <laughs> that I was working on, but I did a little orange for his nose there. So he's gonna be really fun. And to finish up, and so that's what I have going on there in this bag. That's all my Christmas that I have to show you except for my one whip and my whip pile. So I'm gonna be right back and show you more finishes. All right, okay, so I pulled in, I think, I think there's like a half a dozen finishes that I have and um, that I wanted to show you. And so this right here, is a blackbird designs and it's called The Winter is Past. And this is one that I started with Christy. I don't know, when did we start it? We started it last February, okay? And we have been stitching on it together and sometimes in person and sometimes just um, you know, at the same time and texting or, you know, FaceTime or whatever. And um, we both just finished ours. And this was so fun to stitch with Christy. And especially since we're both exactly the same, like here in Utah, we cannot wait for spring to end. And it just seemed to linger and linger and linger and this year. And so we were so happy because this is, um, of course, called The Winter is Past. And so we were happy to finish it up right when spring was beginning. So this is stitched on 36 count Oaken by Picture This Plus. And I stitched with all of the called for over dyed by Weeks Dye Works, which is right here. But I love that. And I'm not sure how I'm gonna finish that or if I'm gonna frame it because it's square, it might be really fun in a pillow or like patchwork pillow. You know, a little bit of patchwork around it you know just very simple so that it wouldn't take away from the design but um love the colors in here the blues and so i was glad to have that finish all right let's pull out the next one i've got going on here let's see if it's upside down right side up here we go I had um, started this one in this February, and this is called The Maker and the Mender with thy needle, by With Thy Needle and Thread, and this was so fun to stitch. And I can't remember if I used the called for what I did. Let me look on my card. This is stitched on 36 count Legacy Linen by Picture This Plus. And I used uh, overdyed floss for my stash and some that were called for. So again, as per usual, what I do is I go through and see what colors that I have that were called for. And what I don't, I just pull according to whatever linen that I had in my stash that I pulled from. I want to make sure sometimes even if all of the colors that are called for, I have and work with my colors and my home decor, if they don't show up on the linen, then I may have to switch some things around. And so that's what I did with this. 
And so, let's see, this is um, 611 DMC, Yield Gold, Blue Corn, Mountain Mist. I think those were called for. And then the ones that I switched, I believe, are old. I used Old Brick. I used Pomegranate. I, I believe the peach was called for as well. There's just a little bit of peach, so I used that. And then I used Endive. I don't think that was called for, but I can't remember. But anyway, that's, that's what I used. That's what's here on my little floss ring. And so I'm going to get this framed and, and put it on my sampler wall. And this has been living in this cute little bag made from an old quilt. All right, sis, there's that. Now let's see what we got going on here. Okay, so this one, oh, this one was, this one's really fun. So this has been living in my, this is one of my new bags from my uh, panel number two, my zippy bags, and this is where I keep the thread inside the smaller ones right here. It's got my little cherry charms on there. And what I did was I had started this, um, wanted to start this Prairie Schooler garden sampler. There's three of them here. And I decided to do, I just, well, better not open that on the, I decided to do, this one's called the garden gate one. So there's a vegetable basket, a garden gate, and the birdhouse. I love all three of them, actually. Couldn't really decide, but it was it was the gate that got me in this little potting shed, I think. But I might end up doing these other two as well. But I had asked Angela if she wanted to stitch it with me, and then we decided to invite all the happy little stitchers to do it, and if they wanted to stitch, and so a lot did. And I so I did a DMC conversion to Prairie Schooler, and she has, I believe that she still has those in her shop. So go to Happy Little Stitch Shop if you would like to stitch this in my conversion. And the linen that I stitched on is 36 Count Boston Tea Party by LFA Linens. And um, it was really fun to stitch this and with the Happy Little Stitchers and with Angela. And I'm gonna, I, I, I was just gonna say, I'm gonna take this through the framers, but again, I think this would be so cute in a pillow with some fabric right here and maybe some little lace coming down the side or some of my vintage trim or something like that and just put that out for springtime and so that may be what i do but um that's another finish right there i'm gonna put my threads away and when i i was oh i should take them out and tell you again <laughs> So here's another DMC collection that I did together that I think everything matches and goes well. So instead of taking these off of my cards, um, I'm going to keep these together and put them in my bin of DMC. And then it's easy to just grab something that if I decide to do any of these other ones that I can do in the same color conversion and they match or I can take away some and add. But it's kind of already started. Does that make sense? It's kind of things that are already coordinating and they go together and so it's really simple to just keep them in the basket and you know go that way instead of starting from scratch when you're doing a a floss toss all right okay I feel so much better I'm being more organized in this <laughs> floss tube instead of just throwing my stuff to the side all right, so this is one that I talked about last time that I was doing with my friend Julie, the Redbird Sampler. And so um, I finished it and I love it. Don't know if I'm gonna get it framed again or, or I'm gonna frame it myself. But you know, when I frame it myself, I just lace it or I might mount it on a board after I've laced it or anything like that. I do have a tutorial here on my channel on how I do lacing and there's plenty of tutorials out there on how to lace as well. And it's pretty simple. I might even be able to find a frame, you know, that it could sort of fit in 
to at the craft store, look through my vintage frames that I have a plethora of and see what I can do, but I love this. Now, the threads that I used for this are living in this cute little bag. And these are the Vicki Clayton silks, and it was her, her conversion. So I remember I showed you that last time. Okay, and I stitched this on toasted almond, uh, 36 count, fabrics by Stephanie. And let's see, and yeah, all Vicki Clayton silks. I love that. I love that little village scene right there. And to me, it kind of looks Christmassy, but it doesn't have to be Christmassy, but I could I could bring it out at Christmas time. And so that, that's a finish right there. Okay. Thanks, Cass, for helping me to keep organized. All right, so this is another finish that I started in January, right after Christmas. This is the first thing I new thing that I started after all of my Christmas stitching that I had had this for quite a while that I wanted to get started. And um, this is by Teresa Kogut. It's the Honey and Wool Farm. And I wanted this for my bee wall. And it's just gonna be cute and a really cute little vintage looking frame. And so this is what the chart looks like. And once again, I've had this for quite a while. And I just used threads for my stash. I'll tell you what they are here in just a minute. Because I wanted it to match my bee wall. I didn't want it so neutral. I wanted to have some color in it. So I brought some color into it to go with all of the other things on my wall. And so I stitched this on 36 count cocoa linen by Weeks Dye Works. And I really like to stitch on cocoa when I'm doing something like sheep or something or a white house that I really want them to pop. And so this is my conversion, meaning I'm just gonna tell you the flosses that I use. So I used green pasture for the teal. And you know, that's a gentle art. And then I used Oscar for the green. And I used licorice red and brought in a little bit of red, just a little bit here and there on her hat band and on the B skips. I used Garden Gate, that's the darkest, so that's what I used for the roof of the house, for the sheep, and for the bees, and things, for the bee um, little door in the, in the bee skips. I used Gingerbread, so that's what the hives are, and the lettering. And then I used Eggshell for the house, the sheep, her apron. And this is whiskey, Weeks Dye Works whiskey for, let's see, where did I put whiskey with the different yellows? I used it for her hat. It is a little bit brighter. Oh, I used it for the bees. That's what it is. I just pulled in, I wanted the bees to be a little bit brighter than this. And so I, I brought in whiskey for that. I used Peanut Brittle by Classic Color Works for her skin tone right there and then i used wood trail for the tree trunks and for her cane and yeah i think that's all i used that for and so that's that that's those colors right there and i love that little stitch and so that's another little finish i have I've got one more finish to show you and then we'll get started on the whips. Okay, so let's see. Was this, oh, no. This is, okay, so I showed you this on Instagram. I had stitched this last year. I had started this last year in the summer, the humming of the bees. And so I did show my finish on Instagram, but I really wanted to show you that by Blackbird Designs. It always makes me happy to stitch Blackbird. Okay, and so that's a finish. And I had stitched that on 36 count flannel flower by Fox and Rabbit, which I love. Look at that. Look at that variegation in there. And I had stitched with some of the called for and some not. 
So I'm just going to go through these colors real quick. And so I have corn silk and I have putty from Weeks. I have a cider mill brown. I have apple cider, harvest basket, old hickory, and I have Schneckley, and that's another Weeks. And then for my reds, I use cherry cobbler, and I use Tennessee red clay. And what I did with this, I remember, is I wanted a little bit more variegation in the brick, and so I just randomly put some Tennessee red clay brick in there. And so that's what I did with that. All right, so that's all my finishes. And now let's get started on the whips. Cast, do you want if I give you that? Do you want to hand me that stack of bags and I'll put them in the basket here? And we'll keep, keep on going. Okay, how about this top one right here? All right, what do we got here? This, oh, this is, um, this is every opening flower. And this lives in this bag that I got at um, Shepherd's Bush that was made from my one of my fabrics. And then she had made this little bag here that I keep my, my threads in. So that was fun. And so this is every opening flower. So when Christy came for my birthday, what, this was my birthday start because she brought me this chart. And I had seen that she was stitching this on her floss tube. And I said, Christy, I love that. And um, I really want to stitch that. And, and so she um, ordered the chart for me and she brought it. And so uh, we started it. I started it on my birthday. I can't remember. Did she? Yeah, she started it too. She had just shown on her floss tube that she was going to stitch it, I believe. I hope I'm right. Tell me if I'm wrong, Christy. And then we both started it together when she was here. We had such a fun visit. We went up to Shepherd's Bush and we had a good time and we just stitched and shopped and it was great. And so this is um, by With Thy Needle and Thread, every opening flower. And I used Legacy Linen, 36 count by Picture This Plus. And I stitched for some of the called for and, and some not. And I think what I changed, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna go through these because I know a lot of you have asked me about this since I had put it on my Instagram. So I have Wood Rose, I have Cherry Cobbler, I have Manor Red, I have Corn Silk, I have Olive, and Oscar. I have several Oscars. <laughs> Sometimes I do that when I know that that's in a border or something like that. I have a couple of oil cloth. I have Hickory Sticks. I have Mountain Mist. And Brother in Blue, Bee's Knees, Yield Gold, and Grits. Okay, so that's what I have. And of course, I'm not finished. This is my whips, but I do have the house finished. I can't wait to get started on these flowers right here. And then I just need to start on this border right here. It looks like a little Quaker border, I think, to me. I think it's so pretty. And then finish that. So I'm not too far from a finish on that. So looking forward to that. And hand this over to you and hand me the top one. I'll just do the switcheroo. Okay, what have we got here? So what I'm showing you on my whips is some of these you've seen already, some of these you have not seen. But anything that I touched in the last six months that I put my hands to, <laughs> And stitched this is what I brought in anything that I had made progress on and so this is Ann Morrison 1830 um, by Hands Across the Sea and I remember that I had couldn't wait to finish up this portion because I wanted to get down to start doing these fancy letters <laughs> and so I have got to that point right there and this is where I keep my threads in here and I believe Let's see, what did I, that kind of turned into a little bit of a mess. There we go. 
Okay, so what did I say about this? So this is on uh, 36 count parchment by Weeks Dye Works. And I stitched with DMC for all of the called for colors with just a few small changes. And I, um, I also, oh, everything is DMC. That's what this note says in here. Everything is DMC except for Classic Color Works Mint Julep I used for the teal because I like the way it looked on this fabric and the teal, this color of teal matches my my house decor more. It's really hard to find a good teal for me in DMC for some reason. And so I use the Classic Color Works. And so there's that one. Okay, let's do the switcheroo. This one's an old friend. But I've been showing you for a while. But I did, was able to get some progress on land that I love. This is my fourth stitch that I stitch on this on the fourth of every month. Okay, let's see. How does that look like in the, in the screen? You can see that. Okay, so last time, I can't remember exactly what I had finished last time. I might have had one house maybe. And that's all or something I had started, but I was able to do this whole and this entire row of houses. And so this is by Teresa Kogut, Land That I Love. And so I'm just working my way down. Now it's time, I think, to start working more on the borders here. And so that I can finish all I have left to do. This one's really close. Those borders and then just this row of this planter. And these cute little animals there and so I am I'm getting closer I'm getting in on, you know getting close to a finish on this and so hopefully next floss tube I can show it to you and say I'm finished all right so here we've got let's see what's right side up this bag was uh, made for me and gifted to me by my friend Betty and she used Cassidy's keychains tutorial here to do this and then this cute little charm look at that and this bag is from decorator weight I'm not sure I think she said she got the fabric at Hobby Lobby I can't remember but she made me this darling bag this was a start in January that I did for Miss, Mr. Honey's birthday start and so I did this right after I did my my milk and honey and so what I had, what I did was I didn't know what I wanted to start for, for his birthday. And so I just, I have a huge basket of things that are kitted that I've been wanting to do. And so I just said, well, you just reach your hand in there and pick something out. <laughs> and so he did. And so this is what I went with. I thought, I told myself, I'm not, I'm not going to change my mind. I'm not going to say now. I'm not in the mood for that. I'm going to start whatever he picks. And so that's what I did. So this is, and be kind to one another. Okay, and this one is, I think there's a third one now. Oh yeah, I put them in the bag so I can show you. So I've had the first one kitted. This is like a set of three. I'm kind of rambling, but okay. So this is one that I've had kitted for quite a while. And all things be exceedingly diligent. This is by Needlework Press. And don't you just love that? I love that's that's the other side okay and so I believe this that's the first one I think this is number two I hope I'm telling you this right this is number two and then this year in market release is um be a friend number three and so I just love these three how they go together and I'm going to do them and put them all on the same wall and you know it sounds like I have a million walls in my house but I don't <laughs> But I have I have plans for them. I do have a wall set aside. And so this is um, stitched on 36 count spice linen by number 12 Stitch Company. And I used Overdyes for my stash. I just started it on his birthday in January. He just um, pulled it out and I had already had the threads pulled. And so I'm using Endive. I'm using Teal Frost. I'm using Wood Trail, Trail Dust, Hazelnut, Cherry Cobbler, and Colonial Rose, oh, and Grits. And so that's what I've got there 
for this entire band sampler there. That's going to be so pretty. And then when I finish this one, I'll start one of the other ones until all three of them are finished. I think I'll just keep them all in the same bag and we'll go from there and just keep going. Okay. I'm going to hand me the next one. Thanks. Okay, this is one that I had shown you that I had started already, but I was able to make the second tier progress. So this is Caroline Amelia Trowell. Oh, let me grab the chart out of the bag. And this is um, a reproduction by With Thy Needle. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And see how I've got, all right. I'm gonna put that side to side. I don't know if you could really tell, but. So to me, this looks like, you know, three different sections or maybe three different times of life. I'm not sure, but I like how it's kind of divided like that. So I felt like that was a finish just doing that one. This was a finish just doing the center one. And now all I have left is just this bottom right here. But I think this is just a really sweet production uh, reproduction and um, I love the little poem in there I'm not sure yet whose name I'm gonna put in here I could put her name in but you know I like to personalize my samplers and so I'll probably pick someone from my family or even maybe Mr. Honey's side of the family maybe I'll put one of his grandmother's names in there or something like that that was maybe born or lived during this period of time that might be kind of fun to do, but um, so I am stitching her on 36 count antique lace by Seraphim, and I am sti stitching with some of the called for and some not. And so this is Weeks Dye Works Twilight, Weeks Dye Works Lancaster Red, Gentle Arts Pomegranate, Weeks Dye Works Cinnabar, Weeks Dye Works Sandcastle. Gentle Arts Roasted Marshmallow, Gentle Arts Wood Trail, Gentle Arts Heirloom Gold, Gentle Arts Endive, Weeks Dye Works Putty, DMC 730, DMC 610, DMC 754, and DMC Accrue. So that's what those threads are. And that's my progress on that. And hopefully next floss tube, I will have a finish on, on her. Okay, next up we have, oh, this is a fine house indeed. And this is the one I'm stitching with Laura. And Laura, I'm excited for you to see this progress. I need to send you a picture. And so I'm stitching this on 36, Count Mayflower Linen by Fox and Rabbit. And boy, do I love this linen. I love how this just looks so vintage. And this is like a clean looking linen with just the perfect amount of modeling and, you know, antique goodness to it. And I'm stitching, this is the one that I'm stitching. I showed you the colors before, but this is the one I'm stitching with. Um, oh, here's the chart by Lottie Daw. Okay, so that's that's what it's going to look like. I did make quite a bit of progress on that. I'm stitching with the anchor spools. Okay. And this is a perfect... I've got to the point where I think I may start the grass down here or a few things like that or just outline the windows. Once you get the windows in on this side, it's going to be easy to do that checkerboard pattern around it. But I am going to go... Um, Mr. Honey and I are going to go next month to visit Christy and her family for a week. And so this is going to be one that I'm going to take there so we can just talk and chat and do whatever we want and not have to think too much. And I can just fill in the stitching. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, here's another one living in one of my calico bags here. Oh, this is another blackbird. Okay. Now this is a series that I've been working on for a while. And this is the garden series, the garden club series by Blackbird Designs. Let me pull the charts out here so I can show you as I'm pulling them off. 
All right, I wanna get that in there so that you can see. So this is number one right here, and that's basket of cherries. And this is number two, which is apple orchard. And then number three is two on two different linens. And I should be showing you the back of this because, let me show you number 12. See if it shows. Well, here's number 11. So see how you can see the back, how they're all different linens, but they're stitched together before they get framed. And so I was gonna do it in pillows, but every time I go to Shepherd's Bush, which is where I bought all of the linens and the charts a long time ago, as I see there's framed on the wall, I'll finish like this. So I've changed my mind. I'm not doing them in pillows. I'm going to put them all together and sew them together and then take them to be framed. And so that's kind of what that, you know, that's what that looks like and the purpose of doing all the different linens. And I think it's so fun. Okay, now that I get mixed up here. Okay, so number three has um, two different linens and two different designs. So that's what that is. And then number four, that's what that one looks like, the sweet home. And then this number five, Butterfly Garden, is another one that has two different linens and two different sections. So that's what those look like. And I like that because the other ones were going to be sewn this way. These are going to be sewn together this way. And then this is number six, the tulip and the lily. And then I've got, I was able to do number seven, and it's, again, two different ones right there and it's climbing the trellis and so I was able to finish those two up and then the next one is number eight the rarest flower and they're starting to show there on the back how you can put them together but I'm probably not going to do it as I go along like they are I'll probably do it all at the end <laughs> but so that's fun I'll continue on with those And then, let's see, over here I've got one more stack left of whips. Oh, this is the Christmas one that I was telling you about. So this is Peace on Earth by Samplers Not Forgotten. Okay, and this is one that I started um, in December, right before Christmas. And I just, I, I was just done stitching Christmas after I had stitched to this point, to the end of December. That's usually when I finish stitching Christmas is January, I mean, December 31st, and then I move on to something else. And so this is what I'll be stitching on on my 25th day and um, for the rest of the year. I haven't pulled it out yet, but I'm going to now. And so um, I'm stitching this. Let me show you the chart again so you can see. It's just symmetrical pretty much. On the other side, there's a few little differences over here, but I have loved stitching this. I'm stitching this on 36 count linen winter woolens by Seraphim. And I'm stitching with the Call Four Weeks Dye Works over dies. And I just love that. So I'll be continuing that and I just keep my little threads here. Right here inside this little bag to keep them protected. I like to keep my threads because of the ends. I don't want them to get frayed and things like that in a separate bag most of the time. All right, so there, there's one. Oh, does that go in there? I'm like, where's the bag for that? Was that it, sis, or did I not have a bag for that? I have a bag for that. Oh, okay, let's put this back on the design board. I don't know why I didn't have a bag for that. Okay, so this one is my progress on Prairie Life Sampler by Heartstring Samplery. And so I had already started that and shown you this. I started this last fall um, during Sampler, Sampler September. And um, I had had this, well, no, I didn't start it. I pulled it out because I remember Angela they had, from Happy Little Stitch Shop, they had picked this 
for their sampler. And I'm like, I already have that and started. I'm going to pull it out. And so that's what I did. So I'm stitching this on 36 count fresco by Picture This Plus. And I'm stitching with over dyed floss for my stash. And this is the one where I'm changing just a little bit because I want it to represent my ancestors, my pioneer ancestors, who I have many of who came across the plains. And even though I love Laura Ingalls Wilder and Little House on the Prairie, which is what Beth designed this around, I wanted it to be more for my ancestors. And so what I ended up doing was doing a whole wagon train of covered wagons just to represent many ancestors. And then I did this. I was able to do the border to this point. I need to finish the border and then I'm gonna start adding all the little things down here. And that kind of pertain to my family a little bit. And um, so that's my progress on that. All right, let's do a switcheroo on something else. All right. Oh, this is one that I had started and shown you before. This is by the Scarlet House. This is the floral motif sampler. And this is a joy to stitch on, just all of those little um, floral motifs. They're just so fun to just pick, pick up the linen and just start stitching. And um, so what I'm using for the linen for this is 36 count pie crust. And it's a Wabi Sabi fabric um, from the Kitten Stitcher. And let's see, I am using most of the call for threads. And let me look on the, let me look in the bag. I just said on my thing that I'm using over dies, so I, don't, I wanna make sure. I don't think I did any sub substitutions, but let me look really quick. You know me, I'm usually like switching out a red or something like that, but I always have it written down. Okay, so I'm using grits instead of whitewash. Grits is one of my favorite. So I'm using all of the call for except for grits by Weeks Dye Works instead of whitewash. I'm also using Weeks Dye Works Onyx instead of black licorice. And I'm using cayenne instead of Buckeye Scarlet. And then I'm using Sage, which is right here, <laughs> instead of Moss. And Sage is by Weeks Dye Works. Everything else is the call for. So that's what I'm doing for that. And I'm just gonna, I, I don't know, I'm probably about, I don't know, do you think I'm halfway? Maybe a little less than halfway. I don't know, the border is completed though. So, so there's that one. We're getting out down to the end. All right, what's that? I almost forgot to put the library card back in. Those library cards keep me straight, so I always wanna make sure they stay in the bag they keep me straight while I'm stitching and then after after I'm completed stitching too and so as you saw I put the library cards on the frame and if I don't frame them then I keep them in my little stitch card files to keep track of everything that I've done all right so here's my floss in here this is an old friend again this is by Teresa Kogut and I was able to make progress on come to the garden you can see the bottom of the border there. I've started working down the borders here. And then I'll take this flower right here and start filling in the rest of the sides. But I think my progress on this one was this, this right here and the borders. I think that was my progress from last time. And keeping my threads in here and my little, and my little uh, bag to keep things protected. I am stitching on 36 count milk and honey by Fiber on a whim. And I am stitching, I know I've told you all of this before in my past floss tubes, but I'm stitching with some of the call for and some not. So I know I've told you which ones that I am using in my other ones. So you can go through that. 
you know, if you'd like to know that. But I'm excited about that. I want to get that one going. I love pulling these out just like old friends and speaking of old friends. This is my, this is a biggie, but this is my Sabbath stitch. I made a lot of progress on this. Some Sundays I wasn't able to stitch at all, but some I was able to stitch, you know, for three hours, but over the last six months. So I was hoping that I would, I would be a little bit farther on, you know, further, farther, whatever you want to say on this one, but I'm not yet. But hey, I've made a lot of good progress because last time I hadn't, can you see clear over to this side? Uh, last time I needed to fill in over here. And so I finished all of that up and then I hadn't done anything on this bottom half. And so I was able to, I started from the center here and what I've been doing on this one is kind of just doing this symmetrical. I did this bird, then this one, you know, I'm going back and forth. And so that's what I'm gonna continue doing it really isn't a lot of space left. Let me pull out the chart and show you. So this is, of course, considered lilies by Heartstring Samplery. And so this is what I've got left. And everything is symmetrical, just in different colors, meaning the same thing. And so I've just got some trees and flowers and baskets. And I've got these peacocks that I can't wait to do down there by the planters down here. And so I'm getting there and I did not fill in my initials and the date yet in this cartouche up here, but I know for sure it will say 23 because I will be finished with this and then I will be starting on my next, my next Sabbath stitch after that. But I cannot wait to get this one framed and on the wall, that's for sure. And so that is all of my whips. Let's see, should we fold, the, fold that up and stick in here, sis? And then do you wanna hand me this bag? So this is what I was gonna ask you to do, if you would be so kind, please, is to help me vote on my next start. So what I'm doing is I'm finishing two to one start, meaning I don't wanna get buried too much I'm having fun stitching on all of these different things, but I don't want to do so many starts that I can't spend enough time in each one, you know, to do, to, to really enjoy it. I really like to stitch on most of my things for at least three or four days mm -hmm. to just really get involved in it and enjoy it, you know, see what I'm doing other than my red and blue samplers for my heritage wall. I do those every day. And so in this bag, I pulled six projects that I'd like to start and I would like you to help me decide once I finish two of these which one I should start next. Now I'm probably going to stitch end up stitching all of them but I want to know which one I want to start next but first I want to tell you about this cute bag it was made for me by my friend Jen Gregory and she is on Instagram as a Rocky Mountain Stitcher but she made this bag for me using one of my panels and then she she used Cassidy's tutorial to do this keychain, but look, she put a wood bead on the top, but isn't that sweet? So this is a pretty big bag. And so I thought I'm gonna put six of these in here and whenever, whichever one you choose for me to do, then I'm gonna start as soon as I finish two. And you can see that two and two of my whips that I have, I have a pretty good, you know, chance on finishing something pretty soon. And so some of these I've had kitted up, like this one, I've had kitted up for a little while. This is by Lila Studio. I hope that's not too blurry. Let's see. Sis, can you see that? Okay. Okay. So this is Busy Bee. Now, wouldn't this be sweet on my bee wall? So I really need to put that on there. And I've always loved this little poem. How doth the busy little bee improve each shining hour and ga gather honey all the day from every opening flower. And so that's one. So, so here's your choices. Here's busy bee. And then of course I'll end up putting the threads in here and put in the bag. And I've got another one by Lila Studio. This is the Lord's Prayer. Now this was just a release at market this year and I love this. So I'm definitely going to stitch this. Look how beautiful that is. I just love that border and the flowers and the Lord's Prayer being in that oval like that is so beautiful. Okay, so 
So there's another choice. This is choice number two. I don't know. I'm not numbering them. I'm just going to be calling them by the title. So there's the Lord's Prayer. And then Busy Bee. And then this one is by the Scarlet House. I have two by the Scarlet House, actually. And this one I've had for quite a while. This is Life on Sampler Hill. Okay, so that's Life on Sampler Hill, or you can just call it Sampler Hill. And this one also is by Tanya the Scholar from the Scarlet House. Little Deed Sampler. This one I had kitted for, I don't even, ever since it came out. And I just have not started it yet. So let's see, it looks like it came out in 2019. So it's been several years that I've had it kitted and just did not do a start. So here's, here's another one, Little Deeds. And I'll go through them again. And this is one that I just love this by Annie of Annie B's Folk Art. Okay. And this was a new one as well. And this is called Channing Street. Love the poem in it. Just, I love this border. Annie, I love this. So I want to stitch this too. Don't have it kitted yet. But if you choose this one, I'll kit this one up right away and start it. And then the last one I have is another one by Beth, Heartstring Samplery. This bag is so old because it's been in there forever. <laughs> the floss and everything, but this has never let you go. Now, this is one I pulled for, I have already done a wedding sampler for Mr. Honey's parents, and I'm doing one for my parents, and this is the one that I pulled for my parents right here. And I'm in the middle of doing Mr. Honey's and mine wedding sampler, and I'm hanging them on a wall in our bedroom. This is one right here that I just thought depicted my parents in, in their red brick house and all the farm animals. Here's my mom and dad and all of the things. And I love, love the poem. It says, I wish I was a little seed and I'd grow and grow and grow. I'd twine myself around your heart and never let you go. And this is called Never Let You Go. And I thought what I would do in this right here is I would put their date and their initials instead of these angels right here i'll put their initials here and then their wedding date here uh, so that i just kind of randomly <laughs> there's so many that i have kitted and things but i just kind of randomly picked these six so will you please please leave me a comment and tell me what you would like to see me stitch and then i'll detail what i'm stitching on and you know give conversion whatever it is so there's never let you go Little Deeds, um, Sampler Hill, Busy Bee, The Lord's Prayer, and Channing Street. Okay, so there's the six, and then I'm going to go ahead and put them in this darning bag. Thank you again for this bag, Jan. I just love it so much, and I love the size of it, and, and that it's quilted, and that you've used my fabric. Okay, so I know that was a long floss tube, but you know what? I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I love showing you my stitching. I haven't had a chance at all. This is the first chance that I've had to even, you know, get to where that I could show you anything. And I really wanted to take my time and talk about each and every little thing. I know we all love to stitch, but we all like to share what we're stitching to. And so... I promise I'm not going to take this long to make another floss tube. Now, I did do a slideshow at the beginning of this video of my whips, and then I have a little smaller slideshow at the end here of some photos of my finishes. And so I hope you enjoy those as well. Please leave me a comment if you have a suggestion for me on my bee wall, and leave me a comment voting on the next thing I should start as soon as I finish two of my whips and I'm gonna probably pick the two that are the closest and get those finished and then of course I'll post them on Instagram and I'll post my start on Instagram but I'll also talk about it in my next floss tube and so I have so enjoyed today and I appreciate you all so much thank you for being my stitchy friends and I'll chat with you later